Be inspired on Liberty Radio. The service to me today was good. Um, it was quite different, you know, because um, first of all, looking at how we honor God with our time, and you know, with that, we're able to demand promises from God through that. So it just showed me like the importance of putting God first in everything. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me. Put my words to the test. See if it's true or not. If God is someone that honors his word, then naturally I need to be able to replicate that not only in my spiritual life, but in every other area of my life. What I got from the message is that I need to be a person of my word because, you know, sometimes as people, we make promises and we say, oh, we're going to be here, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, but we don't always fulfill what we're supposed to do. And if we can't do that with people, what about God? We should, whatever we do, we should do it with reverence and respect. So in the same way, we reverence God, we should reverence other people as well. I got that our words are very powerful because God's word, he keeps his word. Everything God says, he does it. So if I follow God, everything I say, I have to do it and be faithful to it. And when I do that, my life is a testimony of that. I was put in my place because I'm very demanding when it comes to require, requiring things from God. I always want his word to be fulfilled in my life. But then I was made to sit down and re-evaluate myself because whenever I say something, I was being honest when I said, my God, sometimes I don't fulfill my word. So this, I need to work on myself. I need to go home and actually start working on myself to be able to fulfill my word the same way God fulfills his word in my life. If God values his word, you have to value your own word. If we are made in the image of God, and God is careful to honor what he said, God doesn't go back on his word. His word says that his word will not return empty. God doesn't go back on his word. And how many times people, they make foolish vows with God that they don't keep. Vows of saying, my God, from now on, I abandon this sin. A few days later, where are they? Back in that sin. But Bishop, you don't understand. It's because I'm not able to overcome it. Lies. You are. You don't want to. You don't want to. That's the truth. You don't want to, because my friend, where there's a will, there's a way. When you want to change something, when you want to make a decision to change so that you live in line with the bar of the word of God, when you want to, you change. There is nothing more powerful than a decision that a person makes. When you decide to do something, no one can interfere with your decision. Listen, even God cannot interfere with your decision. My Lord, if we had, if everyone has a, a breaking point, everyone has a limit to how many times they can be offended. And if we had offended people as much as we have offended you, my Lord, no one would give us the time of day. No one would take us back. But this is where you are different, my Lord, because no matter how many times this person, without knowing the truth, they offended you. If their repentance is sincere here today, you accept them here right now, my Lord. So come, my Father. Come and make this person to know that you have accepted them, not by something that they feel. We don't want your people to feel anything right now. We want them to know that just like you want us to honor our word, you honor yours. 
And you said, come, let us reason together. Though our sin, your sins are like scarlet, I will make you as white as snow. If you believe in this word, receive the forgiveness of your sins right now. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter if you did the most despicable things in the world. It doesn't matter if you considered yourself a despicable human being. It doesn't matter if you have been to prison several times. It doesn't matter if you've heard from people that you are a waste or you were a waste of space. Because for God, this is not true. He redeems you here today. He redeems you. Very good evening to all of you. May God bless you abundantly. That's right. On Sunday, we were talking about the power of the Word. And of course, you cannot talk about the power and the importance of the Word of God without talking about the Word of those who were made in the image of God, ourselves. We, it's very easy for us to say, my God, honor your Word. But we have to start honoring ours as well. But we are living right now in the month of trying God's Word. And we're going to look at an example, the example of Peter, that when he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus, he, as an expert fisherman, Peter was an expert fisherman because, you know, he did that certainly from a very, very young age. In the past, uh, children would take on the, the same careers, the same jobs as their parents. And surely Peter, he started working in the boat with his family. S certainly he, he followed on the footsteps of his family. But having worked the whole night to catch fish, he came back empty-handed. But the Lord Jesus made a challenge with him. Let's read here what happened. Um, Luke chapter 5. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, at your word, I will let down the net. You know something, uh, for a person who is an expert at their field, knows what they're doing, to have someone who apparently knew nothing about his field. Of course, Jesus knew because the Lord Jesus knows everything. But apparently, the Lord Jesus was someone who knew nothing about fishing. So for someone who was an expert, having done things exactly as they should have been done, to hear someone tell him, look, go back, do it again. It's like he was saying, you did it all wrong this time. So for Peter to say, Lord, I did it the whole night. However, upon your word, I will go and do this. That was not only an action of faith, but an action of humility. Think about that. I imagine, imagine you, for example, who were born in this country and the only language you speak is English. And you studied English literature at university, you are well versed in the English language. And then someone who's only started learning English last week, last year, starts correcting you in your English. If anything, for you, this is an offense. And this is more or less what was happening here. But Peter, when he said, upon your word, or nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net, not only was he showing his faith, but he was showing also his humility. And we can say that 
Putting our faith upon the Word of God is a matter of faith and humility. You know, I have here tonight Pastor uh, Ricardo from our church there in Croydon. And for example, how many times we say, we pastors, how many times you, for example, you've gone to a service and you're struggling in your health and you receive the prayer, for example, today, Tuesday, you receive the prayer for healing or Sunday, and then the pastor from the altar said, look, those who believe, go back to your doctor, ask for a second opinion, ask for another set of tests, because in the name of the Lord Jesus, those tests will come back negative. And listening to the word of the pastor, who is not a doctor, and he's not telling you to disregard the doctor's advice, he's just asking you to go back for another, for a second opinion. But to take this word, and to act on this word, what is that if not a, a, a step of faith, but humility as well? The problem is that many times, and I'm sure that my colleague here, Pastor Ricardo, he's experienced this in his ministry. Many times, and not only with examples like this, but other things. Sometimes we say to the person, look, you need to ask for forgiveness to that person that you offended or you need to go there and forgive your aggressor. But many times people do not have the action of Peter to say, upon your word I will go and do this. Instead they say, Pastor, upon your word I will do nothing. Pastor Ricardo, has this happened to you? Good evening, Bishop. Good evening to all. And actually, Bishop, I had an experience this week. I went for a visit and there was a lady that she was there sitting down. She was sick and she couldn't walk at all. She was there even to, to bring her from the bed, to sit down in a, in, on the chair. She needed someone to carry her. But I looked at her and I said, just believe in the words. If you believe in the word, you're going to walk right now. And right after, Bishop, when I said this, the lady, she put her stick aside, she grabbed my hands and she stood up and started walking in the house. It shows that maybe she was there, you know, hopeless, but when she believed in the word, the word of the man of God, she started walking. And this is what people, they need to do. They need to believe and trust in the word not looking at the, the situation. Maybe the situation around is, is not a good situation, but when people, they hold on not to their feelings, they hold on not to their problem, but they hold on to the words, for sure there will be a transformation, Bishop. So just like, remember, the action of Peter to say, at your word I will let down the net, was not only an action of faith, but humility. So to, we, we can even say that to, to deposit our faith upon the Word of God is an act of faith and humility. So have you done that? For example, we said that this month of June will be the month of trying the Word of God, of putting the Word of God to the test. Understand, not putting God to the test. Please. Let's be very clear about this. We're not putting God to the test, we're putting His Word. And He said that we should do that. But maybe, of course, we, you can only do that if you do what He asks of you. Peter was doing exactly what the Lord Jesus asked of him. And it's important that you understand that for you to try the Word of God, you have to do exactly what he asks of you to do. If you haven't done that, this week is an opportunity. We spoke on Sunday about the widow. The widow said to the prophet that upon your word, I will do what you're saying. I will go in and, and, and do the, the cake and bring it to you. Do that this week. What God has spoken to you for you to act your faith on, who, who knows, you went to the service on Monday, yesterday, and God spoke to you for you to go there back to your work and to, to take a, a step of faith, to apply for 
your promotion. Maybe you, God spoke to you for you to go and make peace with someone that you offend or that, or that hurt you. Maybe God spoke to you that it's enough of you living an unrighteous life. This week is the week of acting upon the word like Peter did. That's what you need to do as well. If you were praying and doing everything correctly, like a good Christian, but you were not acting your faith, then something is missing. And something is missing for sure. It's time to do that. All right? We are going now to watch a testimony, the testimony of Adriana, who her life was completely transformed by the power of God. When we come back, we are going to prepare to pray for you who are connected with us and that you want to put the Word of God to the test like Peter did. You want to say the same thing. Lord, upon your Word, I will do this. And then you are going to tell him what you are going to do this week. Let's watch this testimony together. My name is Adriana Lino. I am 53 years old. I am an educator with a postgraduate in alphabetization and literacy. In the 90s, we followed the mass media. We had heard about the Universal Church and we wanted to go. My mother wanted to go because she had many health problems. She would say, I want to go to this church. One time, a brother of mine said to her, are you going to give your money to that thief? Look at what is happening. Why did he say that? Because the media at the time was targeting an event that the Universal Church held in the Maracana Stadium, where people went around with bags full of prayer requests. However, the media said that it was the people's money and that Bishop Macedo was a charlatan and was robbing people. Initially, we saw the miracles and testimonies and thought, wow, this place will change my life. But when the news was broadcasted, we said, well, it's all lies. What am I going to do there? They're going to take my money. Nowadays, I think, what money? Because I didn't have anything. I didn't have good health. I was depressed. I had panic attacks. I had allergic rhinitis. I had asthma. I got married and my husband was working in a very reputable multinational company. Then suddenly, he ended up being unemployed right after we got married. So my husband was unemployed, my son was ill, and we were faced with constant arguments in our marriage. What was there to rob, right? What did I have to offer that Bishop could rob off me? This was until one day, a sister of mine who was already in the church brought me a rose. She gave me this rose because I had a spontaneous miscarriage. Actually, the miscarriage was retained. I was bleeding and hemorrhaging, but the fetus wouldn't come out. On a Friday, she came to my house and gave me a rose. We used to mock her a lot, saying, There goes a dear Macedo. There goes the peasant. But she came to me, full of faith, gave me the rose and said, Adriana, this is for you. Today, your situation will be solved. Everything that is in you will come out. As soon as I recovered, I went to the church at her request. What happened then? The media came up again with more news and persecution. I thought to myself, no, this is not for me. In other words, the miracle had already happened in my life, but I gave ear to negative words. Still, my situation continued being one of misery and failure. The arguments increased. One day, I remember that I turned on the gas because my son was very sick and we didn't have the financial means to take him for treatment. He had a hernia at the time and even when he cried, it looked like it would rupture. So I remember that I took matches. I took a can of paint thinner. I opened the oven. And was ready to light the gas. I placed my head in the oven and poured paint thinner on myself. 
because I was tired. I couldn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. My husband came in, and on the same day, his niece, who shared a backyard with us, went to the police station and made a report. Now, I was accused by the local council of endangering an entire community because if I had set fire to my house, it would have affected the surrounding houses. Consequently, I was being treated like a criminal. One problem led to another, and I went to live with my mother. My husband stayed at home because we had no means of paying rent. Our last-ditch effort was in the universal church. I understood that in order to have the Holy Spirit, I had to let go of my own self, my desires and opinions, and obey the Word of God which was to do my part at home, to give a good testimony, and to seek God every day. I remember that when my husband lost his job in that multinational company, there were people in our family who would say things. He was an instrumentalist in that company. They would say, why doesn't he ask Ajia Macedo for instruments? And truly, Bishop Ajia Macedo gave me instruments, which are faith, the Word of God, and a word that transforms. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit truly are the treasures that we need. During that time, I was delivered from panic attacks. I was healed from allergic rhinitis and from the many migraines that I used to have. I was delivered from depression because I had no happiness. I always wanted to isolate and when I least expected it, I started feeling light. I then started to ask God, Teach me to seek you. Teach me to fear you. Teach me to serve you with fear and trembling. Teach me to do your will. I need you in my life. Without you, I am like a lost child without a mother. Then, it was on the 23rd, on a Thursday. Around 11 a.m., I remember that I took the Bible and I read James which said that we have to rejoice in tribulation because it brings patience, faith, and perseverance. For me, it was as though the sun rose for me. I looked up at the sky and cried. I cried out. I sought God because he is so wonderful and perfect. I was certain that God was with me. I felt strong because my father is strong. I felt beautiful because my father is beautiful. I felt secure because my father gives me security. I felt happy because my father is my happiness. I felt at peace because my father is the God of peace. And I said, from now on, I have a war general who will win any and every battle. And this is how it has been. I always say that the Lord is my shepherd, and he truly is because he leads me to still waters. Today, I have communion with God. I respectfully ensure that I place him first in my life. He is my priority because he is the God of my salvation. I have a cousin who said that as long as I remained in the church, he would not speak to me. He blocked me and I said, Amen, my God hasn't blocked me. The Lord Jesus is the God of my salvation. He is the only one who can save me. He is the author and finisher of my faith. Every day I praise and exalt him. I say that the Lord truly is my shepherd. I have wanted for nothing. I don't lack happiness, peace, or the faith to fight. I have a son and a daughter-in-law. I have a granddaughter. We are a blessed family. My husband and I understand each other very well. Our financial life has been blessed by God. God, with his rod, rescued me. When I say, Father, when my feet are close to wavering, pull me close with your rod. Open my eyes. Don't let me be deceived. Don't let me deceive myself. 
I see God manifesting himself every day in me through the Holy Spirit, God's joy, peace, and tranquility. I feel loved, so loved. I say, my father is strong and a warrior. I am strong. My inferiority complexes don't exist anymore. I know that in everything I do, he is with me. He is my love. I also want to ask for forgiveness from Bishop Ejia Macedo, who is my father in the faith. I say this with pleasure, not to glorify man, and he knows this. It is because of Bishop Macedo that the Universal Church exists, which is my mother. I am here today to testify of God and this wonderful church. On Wednesday, we shall have a very special night. For all those who want to taste the unparalleled food. Capable of nourishing our souls and giving life to everyone who eats from it. A food that lasts for all eternity. Join us for the Night of the Hidden Manor on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX or at your nearest Universal Church. A few weeks ago, two weeks ago to be more precise, we started this series of meetings called the Night of the Hidden Manor. In the past two Wednesdays, at least here in Finsbury Park, and I'm sure in every church, has been extremely special. And tomorrow will be no different. Last week we started a Bible study on the new birth. And we're going to continue the second part tomorrow. And you don't want to miss it. You know, Wednesday is different from any other service. Why? Because Every single minute, every single second of the service, from the beginning until the end, is dedicated to the Word of God and to bring you closer to God. Bishop, aren't the other services also uh, for the same purpose? Yes, but for example, when you come on Sunday, we pray for your family, we pray for certain needs that you have because we understand that the people who are present there, they have different needs. Like maybe you have, you are watching me right now. But on Wednesday, we focus exclusively on strengthening your faith, on you having an encounter with God. Tomorrow, prepare your Bible, bring your Bible um, to one of the services here, especially 7.30 p.m. or in a UCKG near to where you live. Pastor Ricardo will be tomorrow in our church there in Croydon, what is the address of the church there, Pastor Ricardo? Bishop, tomorrow we're going to be in the same faith at 1214 London Road, C-R-O-Q-T-A, opposite KFC, in the same faith. Right next to the West Croydon Station, right? The West Croydon Station, okay. Bishop. I think that's a better point of reference than KFC. Yeah, then KFC. Next time, just yeah. say next, <laughs> next door to the West Croydon yeah. Station. Amen. It's going to be a blessing and I can't wait, we are excited. But now I would like to offer a prayer for you. Again, like we said, you don't, you don't want to put God to the test. That's not what we're teaching you. But to put the Word of God to the test, you want to do what Peter did. And you're going to do that with your prayer now. But I advise you not only to do that with your prayer now, but to follow that up with action tomorrow and the rest of the week until Sunday. So that Sunday when you come to the church, you have your testimony. Take action upon the Word of God. Go there, do that in your workplace, do that with your doctor, do that whatever situation it is, the Holy Spirit will guide you. We're going now to pray. Pastor Ricardo tonight is going to offer the prayer on behalf of all of those who are connected by faith. Let's get ready to talk to God. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord, here we are, together with these people, those who are now connected with us, my Lord. Asking you for this person that may be now 
is lacking of peace, my Lord. And they need to see your power manifested in their lives. We ask you, my Lord, for you to visit them wherever they are, my Lord. Doesn't matter if they are now, my Lord, watching us from their car or if they are at home, maybe on the streets, my Lord. Doesn't matter wherever they are. Let your power be manifested in these people's life, my Lord. And as we were saying about the words, to put the word of God into test, based on your words, we bless everyone's life, my Lord. We ask you for you to prepare everyone for tomorrow, my Lord, where we're going to have, my Lord, the Wednesday of the hidden manna, where these people will be, my Lord, filled with your words. And your word, my Lord, will help them to grow, to develop, my Lord, in their faith. And we ask you for everyone, my Lord, determining now from here, determining that your people will see, my Lord, your power be manifest in their, in their lives, in the name of Jesus. Their minds will be completely transformed. We ask you for everyone's life right now and determining, my Lord, that this person that is receiving this prayer now will no longer be the same. They will see, they will feel, my Lord, not, not emotion, but they will see, they will feel the power of God inside of them, transforming everything in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we surrender everyone's life into your hands. Amen. Praise God. Very well. We believe that you are, we are, you are blessed. And tomorrow, by the way, and from now on, every Wednesday here in the program, my wife will be here with me, Elena. So Wednesday night will be uh, the night of myself and Elena being together here in the programs in preparation for, for Thursday, for love therapy. And it's going to be a blessing. I'm very excited about the Wednesday programs, okay? Join us tonight. Spread the word. Spread the word that Elena will be here in the program with us and it's going to be a blessing. All right? May God bless you abundantly. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time and we'll see you tomorrow in the church. Bye-bye. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio.